<laughs> so I probably did the dumbest thing I could possibly ever do. And that is that I just bought a used HVL V2424 for $600. Um, it's a long story. It's used. Um, I drove two hours there and two hours back to get it. And uh, the guy had some other stuff for sale. He had a, um, a Renogy. 48 volt uh, unit and, and he told me he had this too he said he had like three of them so I do know that this did come from Watts 24 7 um, but there's no plastic on it um, we'll look really careful he says it's never been used but um, I find that really hard to believe so um, I may have made a really bad mistake buying this thing because I didn't really get a deal on it. So we're going to find out. It looks a little worn on the front right here. Like something rubbing around it. I don't really think you would have on a brand new unit. Um, so the giveaway should be these screws. And then... Like when I get inside of it here, um, if it, when I see that, like whether or not, um, you know, there's arc marks where um, the PV would go in, because typically if you have like a decent array, um, you put the thing in there, it's going to arc a little bit if you don't use a switch. Let's see, the label on this one looks different than the other one that I had. Um, I don't remember it being black. Um, there is a seal kind of like, I guess it's kind of a seal right there. So, um, um, so the, the parallel board is in this one. So we're really trying to find out is, is this thing used? I don't really have anywhere to put it over there anymore. I need to hook up my cables in a hurry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video and hook up the cables. And then uh, we'll see what happens. So, so far, it does power up. Put that one in there. Okay, please God, let this thing not be busted. That's all I can say. Because I got no warranty on this. And for a hundred bucks more, I could have just bought one. So, let's see here. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, um, let's get the other meter, my fluke meter, if I can find it, and you know, measure our output just before we get too excited. So, I just really hope there's nothing wrong with this thing. Because if it is, I don't want to be trying to fix one of these damn things. Not when I paid, like, full freaking price. I know Ian's a really nice guy. But I kind of doubt that he would give me a warranty on something I didn't buy from him. It is 109 volts, which means the menu setting needs to be adjusted in here. So I'm glad I checked that. So, um, come on, get out of there. So yes, so these will come default. My other one came default, 110 volts. You got to go in and set it because this is like developed for the Chinese area, where they have, you know, they don't have 120 volts. And a lot of these. If you test it, you're going to find that the uh, the deal is floating. Let's see if it's floating. Um, well, instead of testing it here, I'm just going to test it right here. Put the fluke up here. Maybe you guys can actually see it. Strong voltage. Okay, here's the ground. We have 51 volts on the hot. And we have 58 volts on the neutral. 
Let's see if we have anything up here. 11 volts. 11 volts. There's actually voltage on this. So um, it says right here the output is 110 volts. You just have to go through and, and configure it. And I wish I had somebody to help me film this so I could show you guys how to do this. I guess I could take the camera down and this is going to be a very long video. Okay, so if memory serves me right, I should remember how to do this. So this is basically me walking you through a brand new um, one of these. And I'll show you how to turn off the annoying beep too. I don't know if it's enter. Okay, so enter brings you into the menu. There's a whole bunch of settings that we need to deal with. So when you go through here, you really need the manual. But you go down, that's the type of power. Uh, I think it stands for solar, then utility. Um, appliance, number two. Uh, 110, number three. So we see that 110. Let's hit enter. And then now we can go through... 120, 101, 110. So you see that you get three choices. Okay, we hit enter. Okay, now we wait and see. Now it says 120 volts. Okay, it's possible the guy got rid of this because he thought, well, something's wrong with it. He didn't read the manual. So. Let's take our fluke over here and we'll plug our terminals into here. It doesn't matter which one. 119.8, that is good enough for me. So I don't remember what else I need to change on here, but um, uh, there's a, a few things. And it won't really come into play until you plug in your other cord, which will allow you to either charge your battery bank um, or it will allow you to use the utility um, as a uh, supply to your load. Or um, you can have where it'll load will draw off of the solar first and then the battery. And then when it gets to a certain point, it'll switch to utility. Um, or you can have it a bunch of different ways, and you can also grid tie this unit. So um, there's other parameters in here that we would need to change also. So one would be the damn beep, okay? And I'm not sure what it is, so let me see if I can find the manual. All right, let's see if the guy actually used the manual. We see any greasy fingerprints. All right, so so I'm gonna walk you guys through everything that you would want to do on this. So on the um, first part where I showed you that SUB, that's solar energy provides power to the load as first priority. If solar is not sufficient to power all connected loads utility energy will supply the power to the loads at the same time that's the sub the sbu is solar energy provides power to the load as first priority if solar energy is not sufficient to power all connected loads battery energy will supply power to the loads at the same time utility power provides power to the loads only when the battery voltage drops to either low level warning voltage or the setting point in program 20 or solar battery is not sufficient so if you don't ever want the grid to do anything really there's another setting too but um apparently this thing basically can kind of bypass the battery and the solar can directly go to the inverter it's not really true because you're you're running to the battery and you know the inverter is tied inside of here to the same connection but um at any rate so here's the other one that we saw where it says apl which is, stands for appliances and that lets you set your voltage level depending on your country so um 110 101 or 120 if you're in the united states and also um, these can be uh tied together uh what does it say 
say AC voltage range. If selected, acceptable range will be between 170 and 280, 280, 230, 240, or 85 to 140. Um, then the, um, so those ones here uh, determine which ones you're going to be selecting. So the APL is appliances and then UPS is UPS. I don't know what that really means, but if you want the higher voltages, from 170 to 280, you need to select the other one. Then you go down here to where we were at, to menu number three, and we pick our voltage, 101, 110, 120, 220, 230, or 240. And two of these uh, units together will produce uh, 240 volts uh, uh, USA. I guess they call it split phase because they're, you know, um, not in phase with each other they're 80 or 180 or 90 degrees different i don't know i'm not an electrician um i build and fix things and work on cars <laughs> and i've been to school for auto mechanics i have not been to school for electrical solar supply power apply uh, priority blah 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 Output frequency, if you need 50 cycles or 60 instead, you can set that in menu number four. Uh, menu number five is the solar supply priority. And uh, BLU is uh, solar energy provides power to charge the battery as first priority. And I think the B has something to do with that. They have these weird things. Solar energy provides power to the load as first priority, who is LBU. Now, that means that your inverter is going to run and the battery somehow will not charge. I guess it really can disconnect itself from the battery. And then there's overload bypass and, uh, you know, what do you want to auto restart? I learned the hard way. I disabled that and then I had a fault code because I um, drew too much current and it overloaded. And it wouldn't restart, and I had to disconnect my battery cables because I didn't know how to restart it. I couldn't find it in the manual. Anyway, if you change this menu item or have it to where it will um, restart after something bad happens, it will restart. Otherwise, it will just sit there with an error code. Anyway, it's uh, by default disabled, which is probably good because if something's wrong, you don't want this thing to keep trying to restart until you figure out what's wrong with it. Now, next we have solar or battery energy to feed the grid. Um, and so, by default, we're going to be uh, GRD. Uh, where is it at? It doesn't say. Uh, solar or battery energy to feed grid disabled. So, GRD is grid disabled and GRE is grid enabled. And you do not want that enabled in the United States unless you... Um, have a power company that just doesn't give a crap because this is not a UL listed or approved um, device. And if you start rolling your meter backwards, it won't roll backwards in most cases. If you supply power to the meter backwards, it will just roll forwards and make it look like you've used that energy and you will provide them with electricity to their grid and they will charge you for it. So don't do that. Okay, unless you know what you're doing, don't grid tie this thing. Okay, I do believe it has the islanding function, but I'm not 100% sure, so uh, just easier to just not do it. Charger source priority. Okay, solar first, solar and utility, or only solar. If this inverter charger is working in line, standby or fault mode, charger source can be programmed as below. CSO is solar energy will charge the battery as first priority. And the utility will charge the battery only when the solar is not available. Okay, the default is solar and utility. And solar energy and utility will charge the battery at the same time. You probably don't want this. You probably want the first one so that, you know, um, it will charge it from solar first. I mean, why do we want to use the grid if we have solar? So only solar. For me, it's only solar or that one. And what I would do is I would typically plug mine in at night and I would let it charge. So, um, especially because I might run my batteries down kind of low during peak hours so that I can run the air conditioner. 
and uh, not have to pay those rates. So then I can just charge my batteries back up after it's after seven o'clock and it won't cost me as much. So that's a, another good thing about that. Um, and the default is 60 amps. You can change that. That's the maximum current uh, that you're going to be able to charge. And that is considering the utility plus the solar. So if you want to charge more than that, you need to uh, take note of it. Okay, so uh, maximum utility charging settings are over here. And the default, I think, is 30 amps. Um, the default is AGM. I'm using flooded lead acid, so I definitely need to go in and change this. And so let me show you how to do that real quick. Okay. We're looking for menu number 13. Notice that the numbers jump crazy. Okay. Okay, now we're on 30 amps. We don't want 13, we want 14. Okay. Click that button. Up, oh, user. And that flooded user would be where you can adjust the settings. And um, it'll allow you to, um, you know, configure it for whatever you want for your lithium batteries. So now there's also the bulk charging voltage and some other things and the floating voltage and all that. I'm not going to go through all that. If you have lithium batteries, then, you know, that's something you're going to have to deal with. The low cutoff and the high cutoff and the battery stop discharge, all that. There's lots of stuff that you really do need to know about and set in here. Uh, auto return to default display. Um, I don't want that one on and I'm going to turn it off, but, uh, let me see here. So I just, I am trying not to make like a hugely long video. Um, okay. And down is what starts it from the beginning for some reason. Alarm control is what'll turn this stupid beep off. So uh, we want number 22, and that would be on ESP. So we want 